<laughs> One, two. Perfect. So, yeah, let's look into the regulatory challenges and um, what is actually this regulatory maze. Um, the presentation, the results are coming from the Product Information 4.0 project. Carolyn already introduced it. Um, it's funded by the uh, Umwelt Bundesamt, the German Environmental Agency. So let's uh, look a bit into the involvement of legislation and the DPP. You just heard it basically, just a little recap. The ball started actually rolling with the Green Deal, with a little outline on the DPP. And um, over the years and um, the single steps, we are having now the ESPR and three big projects where we are sitting now, um, Product Information 4.0, the Battery Pass and the Surpass project. <clears throat> But um, this is not news, I guess. Um, we wanted to look in our project what is actually the legacy. <clears throat> so um, where does, does this come from? What is the regulatory maze? And what can we learn from it? So here you basically see in the middle, let's start here, the value chain, starting left with the substances mixtures, article components, going to complex objects and products. And at the top, you always see also the um, respective stakeholders, so the manufacturer of the complex project, going all the way to the right to the recycled material. And now we have different legal areas. You see it here, starting on the left with the chemical legislation, for example, the REACH regulation, in 2006 or the CLP in 2008 and this spans the requirements in this um, legislation spans from the very substances mixtures on the left all the way to the complex projects uh, complex objects and products on the right and also the respective stakeholder the product legislation there you see eco design director for example or textile <laughs> regulation also focuses on complex objects or products, but includes material information. So here we already have an overlap, and the same applies to waste legislation. Here we actually see the biggest span. It applies to the material, but also all the way to the front to complex objects. And if you think on the extended producer responsibility, right, um, then this also makes sense to include the manufacturer into um, the waste treatment. On the right, you see some examples for um, the waste legislation. And here, I think two interesting points are coming out. On the one hand, the overlaps I just mentioned. So the regulatory overlaps and the, requirement, the requirements that are overlapping. But also, if you look at the years of the regulations, you see they grow, grew very organically um, over the years in different corners. So energy labeling, 92. Packaging Directive to the right, um, 94, REACH, 2006, and so on. So every year there was something new, basically, and so this little maze grew. Now, we wanted to know, um, yeah, which are actually the information gaps behind there. Do we have all the information that are necessary for the DPP and for a circular economy? And this is what we tried to analyze. So here, going a bit into our approach, these are all the legislations, so our databases that we looked at. On the left, you see again the legal areas. And here, I think what is interesting um, to highlight, you see on the right the different material, uh, the different information categories, four types of information categories. And here already in the um, material information category, green crosses, you see material information are not only required in the chemical legislation, but also in the product legislation and in the waste legislation. The same applies to the other information categories. So functional and technical information like energy efficiency or energy consumption, product design information like disassembly information and circularity information, also the same. <clears throat> So this also, to remind again, here we have some overlaps um, that we looked into. And now we took all these information requirements that we found and went to the experts. We did a lot of interviews. That These are just the recorded ones. We also did a lot of more um, interviews and workshops. Um, so 26 interviews, five workshops, and a representative consumer survey in Germany. And we went um, to the stakeholders, to each one of those groups, and asked um, look, here is the information requirement that we found in the legislation. Can you use it? Is it useful for you? And if they say, um, or if they say yes, this information is good, we can go to the next question. Um, is the information also available to you? So that means, can you physically get it? If, if they say no, we have an availability gap, and we cluster this information as an availability gap. 
If um, it was said, yes, the information is available, then we asked in the third place, can you also use it? So it's available, but you also, of course, need to use it. And um, here we found three in the usage barrier. If they said no, three main reasons. Either it was not usable because they couldn't access it, because the format was not right, or the granularity. And here with granularity, I don't mean especially um, model batch or item. That was actually um, defined, but more on the um, scale. So just the absolute number, the threshold, or um, even if, if it was, for example, the substance was present or not. So the binary um, granularity, yes or no. If all this question were answered yes, then we saw, okay, there's actually no barrier and the legislation is quite good, quite fine. And if not, we clustered it into one of these three categories. So let's jump into the results. I really want to give you an overview to highlight. Um, we have the report where you can find more and um, more information and very structured for um, all the barriers that we found. So here in the material legis in the um, chemical legislation, as an example, REACH, we know um, we have the requirement to identify articles containing substances of very high concern above um, 0.1 weight percent. And here we talked to the stakeholders and found that there are some exemptions um, that impose an uh, information gap. So more information would be necessary in terms of um, yeah, the chemical information. So um, now it is also required to register the um, articles in the SCIP database. And here we found um, within, the, um, within the discussions that the SCIP database is not complete. So the requirement is there, but there are entries missing. So the SCIP database is not complete and can't be used um, properly. And we found a big um, usage barrier, especially for the collection. They can't really use the SCIP database. You know, it's a platform. You have to open it in the website. And this is not quite useful for the day-to-day -day work of the um, waste treatment. So here again, some um, improvement potential. And now if you also reflect um, the ambitions and the scope of the DPP, we already see um, information gap in the exemptions. There were um, named that there are, for example, impur pure impurities or, um, or additives that would be interesting to know. And um, the ESPR already outlined materials that inhibit circularity, which could be useful um, to declare. Next, um, looking a bit into the product-related legislation, we mainly found um, two main barriers for the consumer. It was often the usage barrier, so the format in terms of the icon. Here is an example, the crossed-out wheel bin. This is already quite useful to know, okay, I can't discard the electronic product in the regular bin, but then the consumers didn't really know where exactly to discard it. And these were um, applicable to some other, other um, icons. And um, yeah, this is the format barrier that we found mainly here. Also in our consumer survey, we found one of the most relevant information was durability for textiles and for electronics. You see at the top, there is a little durability index that is already, um, I think, in the um, energy, lab energy, labeling, energy label of the smartphones available. So it is coming and um, yeah, we see the improvements there. For the information gap, it's mainly on the textile regulation. We see the textile regulation already requires the declaration of the material composition, but has some exemptions. So if you don't um, have any um, ingredient below 5%, you don't need to declare it, or 5 to 15%, you don't need to declare it. But exactly these are also important for recyclers. Finally, um, also let's look into the waste legislation. Here, of course, um, information on the material are important. So we have, again, um, gaps coming from the textile regulation, but also information on the disassembly. So here we see mainly um, the accessibility barrier. The disassembly information are available with the manufacturer, but they can't be properly ac accessed by the waste legislation in their daily work. So here, again, um, improvement potential towards the accessibility. This is basically a little overview to tease you and to look into the report. Um, you will see more information very structured on the left side here. 
um, the categorization of all what was necessary to evaluate, so the legal act, the information requirement, and the granularity, the user um, who needs to fulfill action or to use the information to fulfill his own goals, the access and format, and then we evaluated where are the gaps, and you will also see um, qualitative elaboration in text um, on the right side. This is the main finding in the table and the summary, so this is why I want to point my finger here on the report that is coming out soon. Yeah, a little conclusion I want also to, to state here, I think we only found few missing information requirements in legislation, mainly in the material um, legislation, but what was more important were the gaps and barriers that occurred due to the missing specifications of how can this information be ex accessed? Um, what is the format? So is it an icon? Is it a label? And this has to be, of course, carefully adapted towards the um, user. And the granularity. So should it be a percentage or um, uh, absolute value? And so on. The other um, conclusions, we also have another presentation that go into the recommendations and more into the conclusions. And the last two points. I didn't go into any of the technical barriers, you probably realized. We have um, also other presentations coming up um, in the later session. That's it.